Hello, hello, and welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly yarning podcast where I, Sarah Korth of SCK Handmade, answer your yarning questions. Weston is hanging out. He is stinky and needs a bath, but he also needs affection. <laughs> welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Hopefully he'll just lay down here and be, you know, totally cooperative. <laughs> This is episode 55, and I am so glad you are here, whether it's your first time or your many time being here. Um, it's lovely to have you. I love doing these podcasts and um, answering your questions. So if you have a question, I would love to answer it. There is a, what's it called, link in the show notes below, below this title, um, there's some information and then there's a little more button. I put a whole bunch of stuff down there just for you because, um, I hate it when somebody talks about something on a podcast or a video of any kind. And then I'm like, wait, what did you say? Wait, how do you spell that? Wait, um, I'm not going to make you go hunting for it. I'm just going to tell you where it is. Right, Weston? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so here we are. Today I'm going to be wearing my flossy shawl. She just released last week. It's a long story. Oh, big yawns. It's a long story, and I have a full introduction video to share with you the full long story. But she is giant and dramatic and gorgeous. See you later, bud. And um and and available now. So I'll put the links below to her and to um, the introduction video. So if you want to hear the full story, she's part of a whole collection, a whole collection of shawls. What? Come here. Um, and, and I'll tell you about all of them in the introduction video. I also give you several ways to wear the Fosse shawl. She's a big old rectangle and um, there are lots of great ways to wear a rectangle shawl. So those are all in the introduction video as well. And all that information is then um, in the show notes below. So let's see, how am I gonna wear Fosse today? I think I'm gonna start with the right side facing and I'm gonna put one end up and over my shoulder and then I'm just gonna do a simple wrap. I'm a little warm today. It's not particularly warm outside necessarily, but I am feeling warm. <laughs> it's a personal thing. I don't know. Um, and so I'm just gonna wear it loose around my neck so you see all the beautiful colors and all of the beautiful lace. I'm gonna pause for a second and see if I can figure out what his issue is. Nope, nope. He <gasps> laid down. Never mind. All right. So nice and simple. One of the things I love about a big shawl is that they transition really nicely so that you can wear them away from the neck like I am. And then I feel like they're um, not as hot. So, but if it's chilly where you are, you know, say you recently got 10 inches of snow. Yeah, we did last week. It was insane. I was so grumpy. The boys, I don't know if I've told you this, the boys had a 10 day spring break. They were back to school for one day. And then they had another, then they had a snow day in April. It was crazy town. The big one woke up and said, mom, what's the plan? And I looked at him and I said, the plan was for you to go to school. I don't know what you expect from me. There's no plan. <laughs> it's a snow day in April. Oh gosh, so crazy town. But if it's chilly still by you or you're getting a bunch of snow, you can also wrap it up tight around your neck and be really nice and cozy. So there you go. Um, this yarn is by Miss Babs. I purchased this, but once I purchased the yarn and made up my shawl, they saw what I had made and very kindly reached out to me and they've been very generous. So um, I recommend the company. They've been very nice and I recommend the yarn. It was really lovely to work with. You can hear that whole story of how I ended up with the yarn. Um, 
in the introduction video. So there you go. I'm going on a trip, uh, or I guess I will technically be on a trip when you see this video. And so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to keep this a little short because I got to move and groove. So there you go. Uh, what is bringing me joy? You guys, the weirdest thing is bringing me joy. <laughs> uh, we recently joined our local YMCA and um, my sister turned me on to this podcast called The Handsome Podcast, which I love and think is hilarious. It is not child friendly. It is incredibly spicy. It's three uh, comedians I cackle when I listen to it. They are so funny. But one of the things that they they talk about is treading water. Two of the three of them um, are now treading water for exercise. And so when we joined the Y, I was like, I'm going to try. And so I've only done it twice. I... I drop the kids off at school, I go, I get in the pool, I've been treading water for 15 minutes at a time. My goal is to work up to more time. But I don't, here's, here's the thing, I don't know about you, but when I get in my head that I'm going to like gung-ho something, I tend to overdo it and then injure myself and then I have to stop and the hardest thing for me is like getting going again. So I'm like, I'm not going to do that this time, I'm going to take it slow. My children, by the way, do not believe that I can tread water for 15 minutes, and I feel very offended by that. I can. Um, I'm, I'm ending up a little sore afterwards, so I'm definitely not going to, like, up it real soon. Um, so I think I have some chronic pain issues going on, too, and so I definitely want to be gentle with myself. Anyway, but treading water has been so much fun. Our YMCA keeps the pool like bath water. It's so warm. It's so lovely. You don't get in and are like, oh, cold. You're just like, ah. And then there's like uh, a workout class going on in the pool um, if I can get there early enough. And it's a bunch of older people and they're just bit, 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 about everything that's going on and they are hilarious. I love it. I love it. I'm planning, well, I need to check to see if the hotel I'm staying at has a pool, but I'm planning on taking my swimming suit and hopefully doing some treading water um, while I'm away. However, um, I have a feeling that their pool is not going to be as pleasant and that might make me give up. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Um, if you have access to a pool, highly recommend. Try treading water for a long period of time, longish. It's it's so relaxing. Okay, small businesses. I have my mug from Cheeky Ceramics. It, I, I love everything about it. Everything about it. If you see me at the conference, I'm hopefully going to be wearing a name tag that Rin has made for me. Um, and I think it's going to have similar colors. It's just fun. It's just fun. I'll show you after the con. I don't have it yet, so hopefully, hopefully I'm gonna get it. Here's the trouble: with the big, heavy, wet snow we had, also came power problems, which means, um, you know, it's not great to run a kiln when your power might go out. I don't think so. Um, they're doing their best. Cheeky Ceramics Rin is local to me. They are wonderful. Um, earrings, I'm go, I like, um, go big or go home today. These are from another local artist, um, Cloudy Sky Designs, and they are wallpaper, you guys, fancy, fancy wallpaper, and they're so lightweight and dramatic. I love it. I love it. Love it. So, um, check out their earrings. Um, she's got a nice website, I think. So you can go check out what's on there. She's also started running a shop locally that I haven't visited. And I think that's kind of cutting into her whole making earring um, situation. So um, I don't know how many earrings are on her site. I, I did not check in this morning. Um, hey, I didn't buy anything this week. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> 
so no packages to open. Um, but let's let's do announcements. You guys, the spring shawl along is moving along. It's been so fun to see people's shawls grow. Um, my goal is, last week I told you what shawls I was working on. Uh, my goal is to take, uh, I think I'm going to take my Cordelia shawl with me and, and knock some good amount out. I only have three hours on the plane. Um, so that's not like a super giant amount of time, but I'm going to get some stuff done. It'll be great. Pro probably not finished, but hopefully I can get a decent amount done. Um, it's a free, uh, crochet, well, a free make along, whether you want to knit or crochet or weave, or I don't know if there's some other sort of textile thing to make a shawl. You're all, everyone's welcome to join us. We'd love to have you. We're chatting in three places. I have a discord server. I'm going to put my email down below. Uh, if you email me, I will send you a personal link to join the discord server. That's just the best way I figured out how to, uh, how to get you in there. Um, Instagram, we have a chat group going and as face as, as always as Facebook, as always my, um, make a long group on Facebook. That's what I was trying to say is, is going on. Um, we have some prizes. I'm super excited about these. The only rule is to win a prize. You have to make one of my shawls. I do have one knit shawl and a whole bunch of crocheted shawls. Uh, in looking at my shawls, one of my goals in the upcoming year is to expand my offerings to more um, yarn weights. I have lots of fingering weight ones. I have, I have one sport weight, one DK weight, and one worsted weight. And then all the rest are fingering weight. So I do, I do need to expand that um, to be more inclusive. So prizes. There are prizes, um, uh, Cobb's Cook Stitches is um, giving away one of their uh, shawl cuffs. I showed you a couple weeks ago. I'll put, I'll put a picture up. Um, love it. Very high quality. That's fantastic. Um, I got to get down. I don't know if I'll get this done before I go. But I really need to go through my prize stuff. I hoard prizes. <laughs> I need to go through my prize stuff and pick out what I'm going to give away. I, I, I'm looking over there because I can see peeking, my closet door is open, I can see peeking out of the closet um, a bag that I purchased specifically to give away, like a big tote. Um, so I'll give away that tote and, and a couple other little little things that I've gathered over time. And then, typically, because shipping from the United States is so cuckoo bananas expensive, I don't often, I'm not able to um, offer prizes to people internationally. But I have two prizes that are going to be available to anyone around the world and I'm super excited about that my friend Veronica at Blue Star Crochet has offered one of her crochet courses love Veronica she's amazing you will love her too and then Miss Babs who I told you this yarn is from and has been wonderful to work with has agreed to offer a gift certificate to buy yarn on their website so you can use the gift certificate to purchase your yarn and uh, cover whatever additional costs you might want save up some money because they got some real gorgeous yarn <laughs> and then they shipped it anywhere so that's wonderful um local yarn shop day is coming up my test of my harbor shawl no, sorry, Harper Scarf is donezo, and I'm gathering um, yarn shops to offer that for free for local yarn shop day. If you have a local yarn shop, drop them in the comments, and I'll reach out to them so that they can offer my shawl for free. And there you go. That's announcements. Boop, boop, boo. We're ready for some questions. <laughs> and I'm going to, like I said, I'm getting ready to go on a trip. We're going to keep this moving, I'm diving right in to question number one. 
Uh, I'd like to become a pattern tester, but I'm nervous no one will pick me. What are designers really looking for in a pattern tester? Okay, here's the tricky part. Um, uh. <laughs> Each designer is looking for something a little different. Um, I, to me, personally, as a designer, the thing I am most looking for is attention to detail. I need you to pay close attention to everything in my pattern without making assumptions and without just like knowing what to do, if that makes sense. Um, I want you to make sure that everything in my pattern is really clear. And so if you just go in and you think like, well, I just assume she means this, or, uh, well, I learned in another pattern, blah, blah, blah. And you kind of gloss over the actual instructions to do things that you think are right, it doesn't help me know that my pattern is going to be helpful to those people who don't have that experience because my main goal is to help people grow. So I don't want my pattern, I want my patterns to be really clear. And so sometimes for me, if I'm being real honest, somebody who is incredibly experienced but not uh, a great attention to detail person is actually a huge hindrance on my test because while they might fly through the test, they also won't catch um, questionable instructions. So when I put my tester calls out, I ask for people to respond with several things. And um, when people don't respond with those several things, to me, that's a cue that you're not paying attention to detail. And so I almost never ask those people to test um, because attention to detail is most important to me. Now, let me tell you the time, the story of the time I was a tester and um, the designer did not, uh, I guess I will say, take kindly to uh, several questions or suggestions I had. Um, and the due date, this was a garment pattern supposedly graded for like five sizes. I don't, don't quote me on the five sizes, but it was supposed to be size inclusive. So it had lots of sizes and it was a garment. The due date for notes was one day and the publication date was the next day. You are not going through everyone's notes in less than 24 hours on a garment pattern that's graded to be size inclusive. So what I gathered from that test and working with that designer was that her desire was not attention to detail. Her desire was, and this is from my judgment, her desire was to be able to say it had been tested, which in my very justice-minded judginess, like, uh-uh, if you aren't taking any of the testers' um, questions or suggestions into account, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> um, she wanted pictures from people, and she wanted to be able to say that it had been tested. Her goal was not... Um, it wasn't uh, clarity or consistency or a real clean pattern. So, yeah, that's, that's my two cents. So I think good pictures do help, generally speaking. Um, and I'll find, 
I'll try my best to find my um, photography suggestion ones because um, I've talked about that in the past. Um, but good lighting, um, sharp pictures, a blurry picture is not doing anybody any good. Um, if you can do a worn picture, uh, that's always lovely because people like to see what does it look like on a body. Um, highlighting the, um, project. Okay. I get a lot of testers. Oh, I wish I had a hat close. Um, who will put a hat on their head and then they'll go. Okay. Okay. Your face looks lovely, but the hat, I can't see any of the hat. I can't see the hat and the hat's the point. So like if you're doing a hat, take, look straight onto your camera and then look down because then it's going to see how much more the top of my head shows when I do that. And that's where your head is. <laughs> so it's, it's great to have a lovely face. But if I'm trying to show people how the hat looks and you can't see anything but the brim, like it's not doing anybody a lot of good. Um, and that's really a very flattering pose. So put your camera straight on. Uh, if you're worried about chins, lean your head, stick your head forward a little bit like you're a, a chicken <laughs> or like you're looking out over something and then tip your head down. And that'll give you a nice hat. If I'm showing off this shawl and the picture I take is like this. Sure, my head looks nice, but where's most of the shawl? So you can take a picture. My friend Bonnie it, and my friend Ashley are like pros at like not. Um, this is not my friend. No, I'm not getting into that. <clears throat> They're pros at like not getting themselves done up. And then they would take a picture of this shawl and then cut, cut it, crop it like from chin down or like nose down because then their hair doesn't need to be done and they don't need to have a full face of makeup because they're showing off the beautiful shawl and not their face. Hmm? You know, get some good pictures of the details. You know, this has all this lace here. So a close up of, you know, instead of a close up of my face, a close up of the shoulder here. You know, you don't even see my face. You don't even see most of my body, but look, look at how gorgeous that lace looks. So just thinking about those kinds of things, um, practicing, I know it's awkward, uh, but practicing, you can take great pictures with your phone. You don't need, you know, big fancy equipment. Um, and what was I going to say? Oh, go look at other people and what they're doing. And be like, oh, I really like that flat lay of that. Well, why do I like that flat lay of that? Oh, because it's not just like on their table, but they've got like their hook over here and some stitch markers over here and a cup of coffee there. And it's the periphery stuff that makes the picture interesting. And so practice that. So... So yeah, the other thing is, is you're never going to get picked for every test. Um, it's just a matter of odds at some point. You know, um, some designers get a lot of people offering to test. Uh, and some designers take everybody. I'm a person who really likes to have personal interaction with my testers. And so if I get a ton of people offering to test, I can't take everyone because it overwhelms me and then I panic and then I don't move forward. <laughs> so I have learned about myself that I have to cap it. I usually cap it at 10. I don't do garments, so that's easy. But um, any more than 10 is just too much for me. So it could simply be that you offer to test. Uh, the other thing is, is if you're a really common size and you're offering to test garments. So if you're like a medium or a large, um, there are lots of mediums and larges out there. Uh, if you're like an extra small or an extra large, extra, extra large, 5X, 4X, like there are a lot more openings in those 
peripheral um, sizes than in the middle-ish sizes because there are just more people uh, willing to test those sizes. I'm not going to say there are more people in those sizes. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. I could spend a long time talking about the clothing company that I looked at because they had cute skirts. Skirts? Yeah. And they only went up to um, size 12. Size zero, yes. Size 14, 16, no. Most people are those bigger sizes, not the size zero. <clears throat> That's what I have to say to you. Anyways, it made me want to learn to sew and sew my own skirts. So I want some fun, quirky stuff. Also, I was never paying $130 for a skirt. <laughs> The, the the Becky in me, my mom, uh, said immediately, I could make that for less. <laughs> so part of testing is just that you have to not take it personally when you don't get accepted for a test. Um, and it sucks. I know. I've been not accepted for tests. And uh, ask me the story of my first test. Um and it happens. It happens to lovely, beautiful, amazing people. <laughs> like me. Not just so, so you're not alone. And it's nothing necessarily about you. And maybe it's a blessing. Maybe that, this is the other thing I like to do is I like to lie to myself. And I say, well, that pattern was probably a train wreck anyways. And wouldn't, like, I would have been really stressed. <laughs> And then I don't feel bad about not being chosen. Is that true? Probably not. I hope not. So, so there you go. All right, let's do question number two. Uh, I'm working on a project that has lots of color changes. Is there a way to avoid weaving in all those ends? Oh man, let me tell you. I'm, I'm not a, it's a trade-off, right? I don't love weaving in ends, but also, like, if you want lots of color changes, sometimes you have to weave in ends, um, and sometimes it's worth it, and sometimes it's not. I was watching another podcast, and the designer had this gorgeous sweater on, and it had very, it was, like, mostly gray, and then it had, not rainbow, but, like, several colors of, like, really thin stripes, and she says, and these stripes are just so amazing. And I'm like, yeah, they are. And it was totally worth like the only working one row of them um, and weaving in all those ends. And I was like, no, it's not. Love your sweater. Won't be making it. <laughs> you know, so you got to kind of, you got to kind of, um, weigh the pros and cons. So if, if you hate weaving in ends, you, you just maybe don't choose those projects, but there are some real gorgeous projects out there with lots of uh, ends to weave in. So here are a few of my suggestions. You did not tell me specifically what pattern you are working on, so I can't say exactly uh, suggestions. So I'm going to give a few broad suggestions, and I hope that one of them helps. Um, first of all, I had a tester of my Harper scarf tell me she decided <clears throat> to change colors every two rows. Which, girlfriend, you probably could have just carried your yarn up, but that's beside the point. <clears throat> so she decided to change colors every two rows throughout the whole entire scarf pattern, which, phew, man, not me. No, thanks. <laughs> Um, but she said she did magic knot and I will tell you, I will put the video for magic knot down below and you can hear in the video. I tell you that this is not a precision procedure. Um, but she got it. I, I mean, I didn't have hers physically in front of me, so I could not see how well that worked. Um, but she changed colors every other row and used Magic Knot the whole way. So you could, you know, get real precision with Magic Knot. Um, 
it's not a skill I desire to have, I guess, but you could try. Um, and it kind of depends on how precise your color changes need to be. You know, uh, if it's a color work sweater and you need real precise color changes, that's maybe not going to work. Um, if there's, you know, some buffer or if it's a scrappy project, that could totally work. Um, you can work in as many ends as you go. Here's the tricky part with that, though. Uh, a, leaving an end and just crocheting over it once is not weaving in your ends, guys. That's not enough to keep it in place. You need to, you need to work it back and forth a few times. So if you have rows that you can't work it back and forth because it probably needs to be in the same color. I always recommend weaving in your ends in the same color of fabric as the yarn. So that could be challenging. Um, but weave in as many as you can as you go. I, um, I'm i making a second sample of my Harper scarf and I'm doing mine in two colors. Um, much more sporadic color changes. But when I change my yarn, in this one specific pattern, being very vague, sorry. Um, I am weaving my ends in as I go on my first end. So I change to the pink yarn and I've crocheted over it a little ways in one direction. When I come back, I crochet over it in the other direction. When I come back, I crochet over it in the other direction. But when I change to the next color, I can't crochet over that one because I'm moving into a different color. So I'm reducing the number of ends I have to weave in, but not eliminating them totally. Um, B, two, um, make a fringe, make a fringe. Uh, if you are making like a scarf or a shawl and it's like striped, you could make it fringe. Or if it's, so let's say, if the shawls work the long way and you're leaving stuff at the ends, that's easy to make into fringe. You just add more of either all the colors or that specific color in that spot and just add your end into that and make a fringe. Um, if you are, think about this, if you are going back and forth, right? So all of your ends are coming out like in this direction like you don't really necessarily want fringe going out this way but but stick with me here what if on the top of your shawl you um wove in the ends or uh wove them in a little bit and then added some sort of border to kind of crochet over the top of all of them and keep them in place don't just do that. I don't recommend that, but you could weave them in a little less and then work over the top of them. Or if you could figure out some crazy crocheted border that you just like used all of them. I don't know. I don't know. But then you left the fringe on the other, or you left the ends on the other side and you created fringe out of those. You'd have a smooth side to be up around your neck and a fringy side to be like, pow. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it would be amazing. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> but maybe. Um, and then my other suggestion is uh, fabric glue. Um, I have a couple friends who are making the sea glass sweater. And it's a scrappy sweater. Uh, but I think you change colors every row. You change at least one color every row. And you might change two colors every row. And I have suggestions of how to not weave in all those ends. But um, a couple of the ladies at the yarn shop tried it and weren't a big fan of that. And so I said fabric glue. Um, there is washable fabric glue. And so you just tie a little knot. Um, Add a, add a good amount of fabric glue. It's washable. It's flexible. So it's not going to be stiff. Um, and then they can just, you know, snippy snip them a little shorter. Um, you could also like sort of weave in, you know, you could weave in instead of going back and forth and back and forth. You could like weave in a little bit of your ends and snip them and put some fabric glue on the part that you wove in. If you don't want the, um, the tactile, 
um, stiffness of a knot. I always feel like knots give kind of like a, a lump that even if you can't see, sometimes you can feel. So, so yeah, those are my suggestions. I hope that that's helpful. Um, but I can tell you, if there's a real gorgeous project that takes a lot of end weaving in, in the end, after I weave in those ends, I'm like, mm, it was worth it. <laughs> uh, but I, I love, I love a lot of color, so maybe that's part of it. So I hope that that was helpful. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to check out the show notes. I have links to all of the things and, and, and then that's it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. And, um, thank you so much for joining me. Do, do the youtube -y things, the liking, the subscribing. I would love it if you would share this with a friend. Um, in my Googling, there aren't a ton of just crochet specific podcast so if you have a knitting question i do knit um hoping to get into spinning sometime but i'm not there yet <laughs> so um yeah share it with a crocheting crafty friend i would appreciate it so much and be so honored so thank you again for joining me today and happy crafting